morning family and welcome to the rising stars assembly of gfcc and it's such a beautiful season for me i will call it the most exciting season a most exciting season because it is the season of help this week from today we are turning our attention to the one who matters the one who matters in terms of God's economy, in matters of God's administration. And our prayer belt from today, using Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Can I see Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 11? Isaiah chapter 60 and from verse 11. Sorry, Psalm 60. <laughs> it should be Psalm 60, sorry. Psalm 60, verse 11, sorry. Give us help from trouble for the help of man is useless. I will give it to me in NIV. Give us aid against the enemy. Against the enemy. This brings more sense out of that scripture. I don't want to go into the issues of the different versions of the Bible. But this gives us, gives us understanding. It says, give, give us aid, that is to say help, against the enemy. For the help of man is worthless. So this is the week to cry as we wait for the help of God. In life, in most cases, almost at all times, in fact, at all times, everything boils down to the help and the helper. Everything boils down to the help and the helper. What help do you have? And who is the helper giving you help? That is what makes the difference in health, in wealth, in every ramification of life. What help do you have? And who is the helper? In your health, what help do you have? And who is the helper? That may determine to a very large extent longevity, how long you live, and how well you live. What help do you access? Why so many Nigerians, in particular Africans generally, and other nations of the world that can be grouped into third world nations, why people are crazy about having citizenship in some other countries like the United States of America, perhaps the UK and other nations, Canada, and there's madness, frenzy in trying to seek permanent residence. In most cases, it's all about help, nothing more than that. The help that is available. And the one who is the helper, the help that is available. Why many people, when in this country, Muhammadu Buhari came in as a, as, a, as a president, and he came in very arrogant. I have all the honor and respect to him as, first of all, a retired general, a senior citizen of this nation, and a former president. But I think he's a humbler person now, after eight years in the office. He's a humbler person now. But he came in very arrogant, very, very arrogant. But the only thing that kept him alive for eight years and he's still living and healthy now is the help, medical help he received. And who helped him? Otherwise, there is no way he would have survived one year as a president of this nation. All that he had promised in terms of helping Nigeria, I don't know how much, I think he, he made his own contribution. 
But what kept it was not the help in Nigeria from the previous government. It was the help outside this nation medically. And the helper, the help and the helper. So in finance, in wealth creation, if you meet any man who is very successful in anything that he does, somebody who is very successful in anything, any area of his, of his call or calling, you will discover that behind the facade of the success, there is the help and the helper. And so the Holy Spirit is brought to just the basic issues of life, which is help. So this week, we are focusing on the Holy Spirit as the help and the helper, the help of God. So give me help. You make that prayer very personal. Psalms chapter 60 verse 11. I don't say give us help. Say make it personal. Give me help. Give my daughter help. Give my son help. Give my husband help. Give my wife help. Again, say, somebody's planning to go for surgery, ask for help so that the knife of the surgeon does not help one to die. So that the mixture of stuffs in injecting somebody to live does not become a reason somebody dies. Give us help against the foe. Why? Without the help of the real helper, the help of man can be a fast track experience in destruction. I pray in the name of Jesus. Can I pray for you? Rise to your feet. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that everyone in this house today and everyone watching me on the social media, listening to me on the Christ radio, I am praying for you so passionately and I want you to pray for me that you will be given help against the enemies of destiny. I am praying that God will give you help concerning the issues of life. Why do we need this help so desperately? The help of man is useless. If you have been trusting me for your help, I want to assure you something. You will fail very soon. I am making and being honest. If all you have been trusting and hoping for in this life is that I will help you. Now, let me give you the real help. Prepare to die young. Prepare to fail tomorrow. Because my help, when it comes to the issues of life, my help is useless. In the face of the enormity, in the face of the... the the, the weightiness of the issues of life. Sir, my help is useless. The help of your husband on the day of destiny is worthless. The help of your wife on the day of destiny is the, the help of your current helper. If he is not the helper, I want to give you this one for free. You don't pay for it. That help that you trust that is not the help of God can help you to fail successfully. I pray in the name of Jesus that today the real helper will help you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will recognize the help of the one who matters and you will receive this help. And this help will help you and help you successfully. In Jesus' name, be seated. Be seated. The word of God is coming with understanding. Say, I receive understanding. The word of God is coming with wisdom. Say, I receive wisdom. The word of God is coming with power. Say, I receive power. The word of God is coming with healing. Say, I receive healing. The word of God is coming with change. Say, I receive change. In the name of Jesus Christ, I just want to share with you the revelation in the word of God that you are not ready until the spirit comes. Not ready till the Spirit comes. If you like, you can say till the helper comes. Just guys, I will not leave you orphans. While reflecting this morning, I discovered God does not run of orphanage. Sir, there is no orphanage that God runs. 
people run orphanages in the name of God. And they put very spiritual, divine inscriptions there. But God does not run orphanage. How do I know? Just guy said, I will not leave you orphans. So if you are under the care of God, he does not put you in an orphanage. Now, no, no, be careful, be careful, be careful. I'm not talking about physical orphanage. I'm talking about when God is overseeing you, he does not take you to a place called orphanage that he runs because he does not run one. Does not run one. Does not run one. That, I don't want to give teaching on that. It just crossed my mind this morning as part of the plethora of, of, of meditations and thoughts, you know, skipping around my mind. In the presence of God, God does not run orphanage. You are free to misunderstand me. All orphanages are doing great. They are doing great things in keeping people who do not have help. When the, the word orphanage is from the Greek word orphanos, orphan, orphanage has to do with one without help, one who is stranded, fatherless. When you are under the oversight of God, it makes you his own and is your father. He keeps you in his house. He settles the poor in wonderful company and gives help to the widow and the orphans. He makes you his own. When he meets you, he adopts you and he does not call you a member of his orphanage. He calls you son in the son. He has mansion for you. He has his household for you and he puts his name upon you. Orphans in orphanages do not take the name of the proprietor or the owner of the orphanage. So when somebody puts his name upon you, you are no longer an orphan. Come on, come on. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. So maybe that one is just to let you know that God doesn't run what? Orphanage. God gives help to those who run orphanages, but God does not run orphanage. So, so when God meets you, you cease to be an orphan. You call him Abba, Father, the scripture says, because we are sons, he sends into us the spirit of his son. The spirit that calls out and cries out, what? Abba and what? Father. The word Abba is the most intimate expression in terms of father, son, or father-daughter relationship. So we can call it daddy. 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 Daddy, not in the sense of the daddying of these days. That has no value. But daddy in the sense of the weightiness and the depth of intimacy and relationship at the, at the deepest level of, of relationship. So God makes people into beings who will call him daddy. That is not how orphanages work. They don't work by the daddying of people. Glory to God. So let's talk about you are not ready until the spirit comes. Glory to God. This is not meant to be teaching just come to inspire you and prepare you. Acts of Apostles chapter 1, verse 4 to 8. Acts of Apostles chapter 1, verse 1, 4 to 8. And being assembled together with them. Let's talk about them for a moment. The remnant. 12 minus 1. 12 minus 1 in the sense of he came to call the twelve representing the kingdom. The kingdom that will stand in the gap for all the kingdoms of the world. The kingdom of Israel that had God as their king originally. And that every human king represented in the affairs of men. These twelve had lost one of them to the virus of greed that resulted in death on a tree. Hanging himself. So there were guys who had known trauma. There were guys who had known losses. Not just that they had unexpectedly lost the one that they called master, the one whom they saw walk upon the sea, the one that stilled the waves, the one that spoke and bread multiplied, the one that raised a dead, decay, decaying person from the tomb. The man that was above nature and was the governor of nature in their very eyes, before their very eyes, they saw the brutal, very, very inhuman treatment and death of that man on the cross. I don't know what is called trauma. I don't know what else could be called trauma. 
if that one does not does not come as the first degree of trauma. As if that was not enough, they just discovered in this process that one of them, one of them could not witness the forgiveness that he gave before he died. For he has said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they all wish that Judas will be there in order to receive the absolution, being absolved of his crime, so that he could start all over like Peter. Peter will have needed a companion that, well, I denied the Lord and I, I, I denied the Lord. That's it. There's no explanation to that. But thank God I was not alone. There is somebody who sold the Lord and that is also here with us. So I'm not alone in this helplessness and weakness. But Peter will have felt more confident and, strength, um, uh, and strong if there was a companion in that place. But Peter was denied the help of another person like him when Judas died. So this was trauma after the trauma. And this meant the scripture said that they were living behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. These people had come to know the meaning of fear. That fear was not just an emotion that is deep and real. But fear is a being that can roam the street and fear can be a monitor seeking to arrest. And so they hid. And eventually this traumatized, scattered, dehumanized and harassed band of people met the Lord. And it was everything. They wouldn't want him to go here. They, they just would want to stay with him or we fly away together. Wherever you go, we want to be there. Peter had already anticipated this. When he said, let us make here the, in this place because it's good for us to be here. Let's make three tents. One for, P, for, for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. Why? We don't need one. If you have one, we can stay with you. And so the scripture is when they had assembled together, can we look at that scripture? Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he did not tell them what they expected, but he gave them a command that was like a new command. Before now in John's gospel, he had told them a new command I give, I give to you. Love one another. So this time around, he commanded them not to love. He commanded them not to preach. He commanded them not going out to win souls. He just commanded them something that could be like the opposite of everything that will have expected. After all that we've been through, we deserve a break. We need to be celebrated. We need to show the whole world. Having been with you three years, we have seen you dead we have seen you reason and we have, we have seen everything. I think we are ready. I think we are ready. Tell somebody, I think we are ready. Tell somebody you are on your own. I don't know what you are thinking about. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry I did that to you. I don't know why I should do that. But maybe you need to hear that because that is what you are thinking. I used to think like that. You see, and commanded them. You see, do not depart from Jerusalem. What do you mean? That's a joke. These guys have kept us in prison for this long. House arrest. And we have not been able to go to anywhere. Now that you are risen, let us explore. Let us explode. Let us blow. You say, do not leave Jerusalem. Don't depart from Jerusalem. But wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water. But wait. Because you shall be baptized. With the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. And after that. You can begin. You are not ready. Until. He comes. You are actually ready to fail. Oh, you will tell me. But. I don't need anything to be an accountant. I just need my certification, my qualification, my efficiency and all that. So yes, that is in as much as it has to do with accounting. But if you being an accountant has anything to do with the plan of God for you on earth, you are not yet ready. After all the qualifications, after everything, the secret is in knowing the protocol, the protocol of the one who comes from heaven 
So do not, do not depart. Wait. Do not depart. Wait. Wait for what? They didn't say wait. When, 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 when Samuel met Saul, an anointed Saul, he gave Saul some specific words. As you go down, you will see two men or four men or three men, but some men carrying loaves of bread, carrying this and carrying that and carrying that. This one will give you this, this other one this. And then as you go further, you will see, then you will see a band of prophets and you will see. And he told Saul specifically what will happen and the help he will receive. He said, when these signs have come to pass, do anything your hand finds to do. It means until these signs come to fulfillment, wait. I have already anointed you. But there are things that must happen. We are trying to enter into the logic of God when it comes to human beings. We are trying to enter into the logic of God when it comes to the operation of the earth. Do you know in the heaven, God obeys just one protocol. Is no angel. He does not need an angel to set time. Everything in heaven, when it comes to the angelic host and even demons, everything depends on his perfect timing. But when it comes to men involved, why? He made the earth and handed this earth over to men. Sir, the only ones that are permitted to frustrate the plan of God on earth are men, not demons. No, listen to me. Hello. Oh, come on, let me see. Hello. Let me see your hand. Let's, let's just be sure, okay? Let me say it again. Demons, angels... When it comes to the earth, the space, the sphere called earth, angels and demons have no power to obstruct the movement of God. The plan of God for one second, they don't have. They know it. The only one on earth who can frustrate God is man. Why? And he said, God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. God has not withdrawn the mandate of dominion from man. When you are meeting another king, that king must be ready before he sees you. If you can imagine the smallest of all countries in this world, but it's called sovereign, and that has somebody, whether as a monarch or an elected person, whatever it is, that oversees that nation as the head of state. Every other head of state has to honor the time of that person. When it comes to time, it is said not by the one under, it is said by the one who is where? Above. Time is set from above. That is why all of you who have business to do with God in relationship and you do it according to your time, the day your eyes are open to know the heinousness of that foolishness, you will faint. That God takes instruction from you, it doesn't happen. You are permitted to fail because he will, not, he, will not, he will not honor you. The word of God says, those who honor me, what will happen? I will honor them. And those who don't honor me, I will treat them lightly. That means their life will not matter. Whatever concerns them, the things that make them cry and beg and fast and pray will not cause me to wink. This is what is at stake. Issue of time. So when God comes to do things on earth, God honors the principle, the structure he had put in place. Man is the governor. Man is the president. Man is the ruler. Man is the prince. Man is the, rule, the, the, the sole administrator. If man aligns with him, then his government will flow directly. If man refuses to align with him, he waits. God waits for you. He waits for man to accept to walk with him. So when it comes to the issues of life on earth, it is not about God 
It's about man aligning with God. Because he must use somebody. I don't know where I'm communicating. He will use somebody. That is how God puts his structure in place and submits to that structure. God is the God of principle. God is the God of honor. God is the God of order. On earth, we can give authority to people and override their authority. Maybe in government, whether federal or state or local government, the president can give some power to somebody in the ministry to be maybe commission, uh, to be minister. Or it can happen in the state or local government. I don't even know whether we have local governments in Nigeria. And so we can circumvent and, and do all sorts of things and frustrate what we do for our selfish, egoistic motives. But God, he sets you as the head of that family. If you, you wake up every day and tell your children you are all useless and you will fail, you will be rotten and you go nowhere, that is what you have decided, what, that is what you will have until such a time that those children will reach a point that they will disown you as a father and put a disclaimer before heaven. The man who spoke waste over me no longer remains my father. I have broken away from the authority of the man. I accept another authority. By my understanding, I reject the ways of that man. I reject the words of that man. I go against the ways of that man. And God now can begin to walk with you. Otherwise, as long as you stay under that authority and in the operation of that world, the one that was made to be a ruler will be a beggar. Why? The governor of the house said so. And God said, if that is what you say, everything that God created, he brought them to Adam. And whatever Adam said they were, God said that is what they are. So the issue of waiting then it's not about God. It's about the man. They felt they were ready. Everything was put in place. Let us explode. They say, wait. Wait. Why wait? If this is going to be about God, wait for his help to come. That means allow him to be the one to set the time. Because if you set the time according to your nature, according to your impulses, according to how you feel, you will frustrate the plan of God. So wait. Too many ministries that begin before their time. You see, when somebody comes to church, accepts Jesus Christ and gets, begins to get mentorship and can begin to see dreams, and interpret dreams and they come to pass. I saw a woman that was sick and then I woke up and discovered the woman was sick. I was told to go and pray for somebody and after that, the person <clears throat> became pregnant. I begin to have confidence. I have grace. The next moment you start, I say, I'm beginning a walk with God. Walk based on interpreting dreams and pray. You start. You start. You start. How many people have started like that? And down the line, they regret that they ever started. If God had not been with me by now, I would have resigned <laughs> again. <laughs> Absolutely. The weight that you carry daily, that if it is not God helping you, then you will stand publicly and tell everybody, this is not what I was expecting. So when it comes to walking with God, when it comes to succeeding in God and succeeding according to God's plan, sir, all that you know as knowledge, all that you have as ability, all that you have experienced as skill, they pale into nothing compared to what he wants to do. Say, wait. Glory to God. Am I making sense? Now, I just want to, I have been saying this over and over. Look at me, look at me. I've been saying this over and over. There are two levels of success on earth. There's a success according to human understanding. The success that is mortal. The success that is vain. How do I mean? The success that follows the law of nature and the human ex experience. Success of a get married when it was time. Went to school. Started making wealth. Got married. Had some children. They are in Canada. They are everywhere on earth. And they have this for themselves. And they have this. 
I have invested in Dubai. I have investments and I have some hidden money away in, um, is it Panama or wherever it is. I, I know my worth. This one that I'm sitting down, I'm just sitting down because I don't need to walk. I have gotten everything I need. That is not more than the success of a lion who has found what to eat and is comfortable. That success puts you within the category of mammals in general. A goat that went out in the morning ate successfully. We read goat. I don't know how you, how you, your, that, that is red goat. We read goat. We lived in the same house. We didn't have a separate place for goat. So we live with goat. We had at the and half young reboot, you know, comp, you know, causing goat. And we just had this goat. We start, I started from goat. We used to laugh. A goat goes out the whole morning, comes back in the evening and lies down. And the goat lies down there for us, bringing out things and chewing, chewing, <laughs> chewing, chewing very content and satisfied. And when it was done, the goat will bring out another one. And we'll start laughing. And it will chew very carefully. It means I have made enough wealth. Now I am on retirement for the day. I don't need anybody to throw me. Nobody should insult me. I am chewing what I have. I'm not begging you to give me anything. Atimabu succeeded that way. That is how you have succeeded also. The point is that God is not in the picture. You don't know who you are. You don't know who brought you forth and why you are here. You don't know what, how God will judge you. In terms of what you were sent to do on earth. The assignment behind, except you make yourself, except you were there before you began, and you actually know your origin, and you know the perfect end of your life. Otherwise, you are just like one of those in Atmebo's community. That means there is a success God demands of you. And that is the one who says, wait. So that in making money, you know why you make money. That money has eternal dimension, not just temporal. That money has immortal dimensions, not just mortal. That money has ministerial dimensions and not just practical. That is why the waiting comes. Because there are successes that have nothing to do with God. That is just about how mammals function on earth. And it just makes you a more sophisticated mama who uses an iPhone and other mammals don't use. But when God is involved and you will be judged by the God who knows the standards set from the beginning. The God who knows what is written of you in the volumes of the book. The God who knows why you are here. The assignment that brought you forth. Why you have not died in the disaster. Why you were spared on the day of trouble. Why you live till today. Why you listen to me. The God will judge you on the, on the account of all of that. Then he says, wait. Wait. Wait, you are not ready with all your... All that you have cannot help you fulfill my purpose with. All that you know can help me, can help you frustrate my purpose with. You can make money the way you make and destroy the very people you were supposed, supposed to build in your money. I don't know whether you hear. Sometimes people's business crashing because of a new government. So the man doesn't like me. Or the brother of the person or the, or the friend of somebody tell somebody about this and the person say, I cannot help that person. So business is crash. Because there is a new president. There is a new person in power. And what a wonderful thing that the emergence of a maker becomes the reason of one being destroyed. And God judges at the end. And you know what? It is true. There are too many things that don't depend on your belief. He said, I don't believe in it. Don't believe there is judgment. <laughs> and that you don't believe in something doesn't affect the reality of that thing. It is independent of you. You are too insignificant to determine the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. So for somebody who has never seen the sun, who is blind, he said, I don't believe there is a sun. How come I don't see it? You don't see it because you are blind. And it is not your sight that determines what is right or what exists. Rise to your feet. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, don't let me destroy your purpose in my life. Raise your two hands and shout it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, don't let me succeed against your glory. 
Give me the help against my flesh. Give me the help against my foes. For the help of man is useless. In the name of Jesus Christ. You be seated, you be seated. I was just trying to look at that scripture. Being, being gathered together. I'm looking at that same Acts chapter 1 verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. But to wait for the promise of the Father is a promise he will come to pass. When we talk about promise, there is something of legalistic. There is something that is legalistic about or an obligation about promise. For those who really know what promise is, once you make a promise, you are indebted to the one you make promise to. So one thing about great personalities and one thing about integrity and indignity of human level or human life is doing what you say. It means you are reliable. It means you are dependable. It means you are trustworthy. It means you have integrity. And God is reliable. God is dependable. God has absolute integrity. When he says he will do, he says, is he, God is not man that he may lie. No, you see, a, 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 a son of man that he may what? Change his mind arbitrarily. That promise which he made. Show me the scripture. That promise that he made. Wait for the promise that he had made. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. You shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. I want to trust God in that in the coming days. If God, we, if it's the will of God, we say a few words about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is not speaking in tongues. After all, people teach people this day to speak in tongues. After all, people mimic other people's tongue and also speak. So we don't even know the tongue of the Spirit or the tongue that is natural. So baptism of the Spirit is not the same thing as speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues can be Normally, a natural phenomenon, just so natural. The same way that dolphins can mimic voices. Verse 6, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, it's like we have been keeping this together. We didn't know how to tell you. Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel because we are ready? <laughs> we are ready. You taught us for three years. We were in your seminary. We are ready. We saw you walk miracles. We will walk miracles. We are ready. You walked upon the water. Peter will say, Lord, do you want us to go on to the water area and let's experiment where I can walk on the water? You know, I walked the other time. It's just that I didn't know how to walk for long. But, you know, you know we can actually walk on the So, we, we, can you restore the kingdom? The day that bread is near, it will multiply. The day that the storm is strong, we will steal it. The day that water is a problem, we walk upon the water. We have seen you work miracles. We have been your act. We have been in apprenticeship for this. No, let's not wait. As the time comes for the kingdom to be restored because we are ready to assume responsibilities and rule the world and run things. As the time comes, just tell us it is time because we are ready. It means we are ready waiting for time. It means we are ready. Just say go. And we will go. We have been waiting for you to say go. We are ready. Jesus Christ did something. See what, is, see what Jesus Christ did next. And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, for you, you are consumed about the time of God. That is his authority. He can set time anytime, but can you walk with his time? How many people reached the time of getting married but could not, could not marry? So the, the Father's time is not the problem. Do you have what it takes to fulfill his plan at his time? For in the days of his power, troops will be willing. But are you ready to command the troops? The time of God is absolutely dependent on God. But for the time of God to prosper on earth, there has to be a man who is ready. And the man who is ready is the man who has waited. <laughs> Glory to God. Let's run with that. Let's see that scripture. The father has already put this in his own authority. Next verse. But you shall receive power when the spirit has come upon you and then you shall be ready when you have received power 
that would be your readiness to witness to me in Jerusalem, to witness to me in Judea, to witness to me in Samaria, and to witness to me in Australia, in Antarctica, in the Americas, in Russia, in Asia, the whole of Africa, everywhere. When you receive power, you are ready. When you receive power, you are ready. Until you receive power, you are not ready. I want to use the life of Jesus Christ to demonstrate to you. Next service, I will talk about the meaning of waiting. And I will talk about the protocol. Next service, I will talk about waiting as a protocol of divine help. So I will go a little bit into talking about what it means to wait. I had made that promise on Thursday. But let's just stay with the experience of Jesus. You know, first of all, we have to know that Jesus is the word of God. Is the word of God in the flesh. So Jesus was God man and man God, so to say. The only one who was truly man or who has been truly man and then claimed divinity 100%. The one who died and rose. But let's see how his life panned out. First of all, let's look at John chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. John chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. I pray in the name of Jesus. That everything that has been constituting a war. Blocking you from enjoying what God has for you at the right time. That in the, mini, in the power of the revelation being ministered to your spirit, the walls will fall in the name of Jesus. I speak that limits and limitation, the workings of limits and limitation, things that have been successful in obstructing you and confusing you, because you have been without the help and the power of the spirit, that by the help and the, of the coming glorious presence of the Spirit of God, that those limits and limitations, obstructions and restrictions, they fall apart in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout, I am helped. Shout it louder. Lord, give me help. The help of man is useless. Hallelujah. The help of man is useless. So I don't trust my help. I have no help for you. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. So let's go back to that scripture. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, oh, this is one of the reasons why waiting is important. Wine can get exhausted at such a crucial time. After all the human preparation, just at the time that it matters most, the most important thing can just be lacking. As a human being, how many people just wake up and hear news? At that point, what matters to them is no longer how much they have in their account. They hear certain news that at that moment is no longer about their cars and their toys. And they realize, oh, nothing can help me except there is one that is above all. This is the whole issue of the importance of wait. Just wait. That at the high point of it, you just discover you are absolutely insufficient in the face of what is standing. That is what is happening. This is why we have to wait. This is why we have, in the human condition, in the human structure of life, that are, you don't know what tomorrow will look like. Every one of you sitting down in this church today, I, can't, I can say with absolute certainty, that you don't know what is waiting for you tomorrow. Many of you sitting today, five years ago, you wouldn't imagine where life will be. So, 
So when he says, wait, because he knows the end from the beginning. He actually knows what will happen the next time you place your next step after another. He knows what your next step will trigger. Your next step may trigger destruction. Your next step may trigger implosion. Your next step may trigger promotion. You are not yet ready. Your next application can be the reason of your manifestation, but you don't have substance. And he says, wait. He says, wait. He says, wait. Sir, things are not always the way they appear. I, I don't know what I'm communicating. Sir, things are not always the way they appear. The issue of waiting is that if you can just wait a, lo a, a little bit longer, it will show you what you have not seen now. If you can just wait a little bit longer, you can see what the next step will look like. And be, if you can just know something that will save you from something, you can just touch something that will raise you above something. Just wait. Wait. Wait is a language of submission. When you wait, it means you are in submission to the one who is greater. Rise to your feet. Say, Lord, I will wait. I will wait. Say, so don't let me to, don't let me hurry into destruction. Don't let me hurry into this. Lord, don't let me hurry into that. Lord, don't let me hurry into. Don't let me hurry. Into that. I wait. I will wait. I wait for your help. I wait for your direction. I wait for your conviction. I wait for your confirmation. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. In the name of Jesus, be seated. Be seated. I, I was looking at John. I was looking at John chapter, chapter 2. And he said, they ran out of wine. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him in verse 3, they have no wine. And you cannot imagine Jesus. About 30 years. At least very close to 30 years. Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 2, first of all. Luke chapter 2. And verse 39 to 40. The Jesus who came as the Son of God had to wait through processes. In chapter 2, verse 39. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they had performed all things concerning him. They had performed all things. Like you will say, I have gone through all my educational levels. Like you will say, I have done all the interviews. You will say, I have made all the deals. You will say, ah, they have done all things. But he was not ready. They returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew. He was growing. This is what happens when we wait. We grow and get ready for what God is about doing. If you ask me, between now and the young arrogant man in the seminary that spoke to Father Columbus and told him I was envious of him, he's like, we are mates. After all, I have the revelation you don't have. If I can give you preaching and you preach and receive a commendation, why shouldn't I be ordained? The difference between that boy and this boy is a little growth. Just a little. Not much. Sir, are you ready for the next level? Have you grown an inch to fit into what is coming? Sir, the pressure of greatness sometimes killed the one that was born great. Oh my goodness. Sir, the pressure of wealth have contributed to the death of the wealthy. Sir, the pressure of success has made more successful people mad. Why do footballers, especially African footballers, that after some time they become bankrupt and they beg? Nigerian footballers. Why? Most of them, while they make money, they don't grow. They did not grow before they started their professional career. No schooling, no education, no mentorship. 
They just played football, scored goals, make money, and then retirement comes. They realize they had bought things they did not need. They had realized they had made, they had used money to impress people who did not care about them. Ten years down the line, somebody is broke and begging. There are names of mighty footballers in Nigeria. If you hear that they are beggars, you will not believe. They beg people to, sell, to buy their houses cheap. They beg people to buy their hotels. I will not mention names. They just give a, a giveaway price. I just want some money to settle bill. Why? While they were playing, they were not growing. So the only reason they are successfully failing now is because they succeeded and could not manage the pressure of success. They did not grow while they succeeded or they did not grow before they succeeded. That is what happens in waiting. Jesus was ready or could have been ready as God to change the world from the moment he was born. The scripture said the parents did everything and he went home and grew. So sometimes the whole issue of God keeping you in one place, making you seek him again and making you seek him again is that what is about doing next needs substance you don't have yet. What is about doing next needs the strength you don't acquire yet. What is about doing next needs the wisdom you have not yet accessed. And so it puts you not that he's not ready. It is that you are not ready for him to be ready. Because if he should press the button of your next level instead of taking you off he will bury you. That is why Wise people wait. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 30. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 30. Those who wait on the Lord in verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord, while they wait, shall renew their strength. Means they shall grow in their strength. While they wait on the Lord, while they study Him, while they pray, while they fast, while they fellowship, while they commune, while they serve, they were growing. And God says, who am I going to use for my next level? In your sphere, sir, whether it is in politics, God is looking for somebody. Ah, the president is looking for somebody. The governor is looking for somebody. The CEO is looking for somebody. But can I tell you something? God is also looking for somebody. The problem is that most time, the people God is looking for, they are not ready. Why? They don't have what it takes to enter into that office and honor God in that office. And God is not in the business of lifting those who will break his heart. Who will bring him reproach? He lifted Saul and he regretted ever lifting Saul. And the scripture says, and God repented, regretted about making Saul a king. God is not in the business of lifting those who will bring him reproach. Satan in Freemason, Satan in occultic organizations and secret cult can lift you as long as he knows that you will be used to destroy families. You will be used to scatter marriages. You will be used to initiate people's children into cults. You will be used to kill and shed blood. So the devil uses you and raises you and raises you and uses you. God is looking for somebody. But God is looking for somebody who is growing in waiting. That is why on a day of turning water into wine, Jesus will say, my time has not come. It means I still have some growth. <laughs> Somebody in this house, I will not allow it to happen. That on the day God looks for you, that you will not be ready. I put pressure on you today. Anyone God sent to me today, 
if it is by accident you walked into this house today I pray that this accident will benefit you even if it is by mistake you walk into this house I pray this will be your first mistake that will change your life that you will give God room to use you you will give God room to use you by being ready shall Lord make me ready by your help yeah. be seated be seated just another scripture just one more scripture Luke chapter 2 verse 51 to 52 Luke chapter 2 verse 51 and then 52 then he went down with them after they met him as a 12 year old he was having conversation with the authorities of the Jewish religious laws he was interfacing with those who mattered in the religious space of Israel he was and then the parents came and met him Mary and Joseph. He said, why have you done this to us? We have been waiting and looking for you everywhere. He said, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I would be in my father's house? After that, in verse 51, then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. It's part of what happens in waiting. Subjecting, submission, subjecting, submission subjecting submission the one who wants to be above must learn to know how to stay under the one who wants to rule must learn to know what it means to be ruled the one who wants to govern must learn to know what it means to be governed in the agenda of God God doesn't break his protocol the scripture says he came he was subject to them but his mother kept all these things in her heart. Verse 52. And Jesus increased. At this time, he had not yet had enough wisdom in human language. So there was need for increase. So why is it so important to wait on God in order to increase? Increase in wisdom. Wisdom is what makes wealth either a blessing. Lack of wisdom is what makes wealth destruction sir wisdom is how to profit practically from what is available you can have information that is knowledge but wisdom is what is the implication of the information how do you apply the information when do you apply the information with whom do you apply the information how do you go about it that is no longer knowledge it is knowledge in the realm of wisdom so that is why certain times Jesus is expected to say something and he says nothing because he grew There are many times I say things and I realize I didn't need to say it. Why is I, am, I have not yet grown in wisdom. It takes wisdom as a father to be a father. It takes wisdom as a mother to be a mother. There are certain times children will do things and you just feel like making the whole hell let loose. But wisdom tells you silence and caution. Wisdom can make a very, very powerful person to walk gentle in the face of aggression. It means what is required for God to succeed in you that time. It's not aggression for aggression. It's not fire for fire. It's being a lamb before a lion. That is why David waited. In the process of waiting, he discovered there are certain days you don't need to kill your enemy. You wait for your enemy to kill himself. So that you are not named in the registry of the killers of their masters. And so while waiting, God will let him see Saul. And give him opportunity to kill Saul. But he was increasing in wisdom. That is why when he eventually became king. There were certain moments he did things that people didn't expect him to do. Because he grew in wisdom. The reason of seeking the Lord and waiting on the Lord. So the people that we don't need from tomorrow are people who don't need to increase. Add that to the list. If you have nothing to increase, you have everything already ultimate and optimum. You don't need God. 
Because the Son of God, before he healed the sick, he grew in wisdom. That is why sometimes he will heal people and say, don't tell anyone. In another case, he will say, go, don't follow me, go and tell everyone. Why? Wisdom helped him to know the difference. Mike Murdoch said that it is by wisdom you know the difference. A difference in relationship. It is by wisdom you know that somebody may come close to you, but it's not your mate. It is by wisdom you know somebody may shake your hands, but sometimes instead of allowing him to shake your hands, you bow for him to, to, to hit your back. It is wisdom. To know that sometimes you have power to lift, but you choose not to lift. You need to increase in wisdom. That is the function of the word of God. That's the function of hearing and the spirit teaching you. That when you hear from the priest, the spirit teaches you and applies it. And the day that will have been your destruction becomes your salvation. And God will lift you in the name of Jesus. I'm done. We don't have time to continue. Because we have to give way for the next service. Thank God it's raining. That means they will come a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So let me just, let me just, let me just end it here. He grew in wisdom. See what happens. Luke's gospel chapter 3, verse 21. This is about the last scripture and I'm done. Luke's gospel chapter 3, verse 21 to 22. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily, in, in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved son. In you, I am well placed. This is Jesus in about his 30 years old. Who has won the father's approval by the humility of subjecting to man in order to save man. Who has submitted to the process of growth and increase. The father says, you have succeeded already in the first step. And when the Spirit came upon him, flip to chapter 4 from verse 1. Chapter 4 from verse 1. Until now, there was no mention of Satan in the story of Jesus. Until now, there was no mention of wilderness in the story of Jesus regarding him. Then Jesus being filled with the Spirit that had come upon him, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Next verse. Next verse. Being tempted for 40 days by who? The devil. Sir, the next level of your life, the gates that will pass you through that level, the gate that will take you to the next level, there are devils at the gate. In the gates of marriage, there are devils. In the gates of politics, there are devils. In the gates of wealth, there are devils. There are things that will want you to walk on their terms or you don't walk at all. If you don't have the spirit of God upon you, the plan of God will be corrupted at the gate. Why? God will not allow his son to meet the devil to begin the issues of the assignment until he had grown and he had been empowered by the spirit. This is why he told them, wait. You are not yet ready to face the devil. Wait. While I was with you, I faced the devil on your behalf. But now, you will have to be the one facing the devil. I will be living inside of you. But you will face the devil. Wait until the spirit comes upon you. Why do many believers fall apart? They did not grow while waiting. Or they didn't wait at all. So they didn't have the power to face the devil at the gate. The gate of wealth is manned by the devil. That's why a lot of people have become demonic people in order to make wealth. Even though originally God made them controllers of wealth. But at the gate, they met Freemans, so they met Oboni, they met different things, Bukania and all sorts of stuff. And the devil's telling them, like he told Jesus, you have to worship me before you pass through this. I am the ruler here. This is why God looks like he's not raising people. Because people are not increasing, people are not growing, and people are not interested in the anointing of the Spirit. And because they are not interested in the anointing of the Spirit, God knows flesh and blood cannot stand against the Spirit. It cannot stand against the devil. And God waits because he does not want to have an experiment in disaster. Rise to your feet. Here am I. Send me. Here am I, 
send me if the Lord wants somebody. Yeah, I'm a send me. Lord, before you send me, fill me with your spirit. Just lift up your tongue. Just, Lord, before you send me to your next plan, say, Lord, I am here to attend to your plan, to attend to your will. Whatever you want to do on this earth, don't do it without me. <laughs> Whatever is the next big thing you want to do on, in the world, Lord, don't do it without me. Put me in the center. <laughs> In NSA, she used to pray the prayer. I said, Lord, whatever you are going to do next in this world, put me in the middle. I said, no wonder you married a crazy man, a former Catholic person. I said, Lord, whatever you want to do next that will bring astonishment to humanity, please put me in the process. But Lord, just fill me with your spirit. I said, Lord, don't change your plan concerning me. Please change me. <laughs> oh, can you cry? Say, God, please. Whatever you are planning to do with my life, don't change. Just change me, Lord. Don't change your plan in my life. Change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Fill me with your power, Lord. Don't change your plan, Lord. Just change my heart. Don't change your plan, Lord. Just change my mind, Lord. Don't change your plan. Don't change the contour. Don't change the, the stair. Don't change the length and the breadth. Don't change the landscape of your plan. Lord, change the landscape of my heart. Change the nature of my mind. Change my spirit. Lord, feel me. Lord, what? Somebody. Halabosh. Here is your boy. Use me. Halabrosh. If the Lord wants somebody, yeah, I'm a feel me. Wait on you. Lord, we wait. We wait. Lord, we wait. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait. Jesus waited for the right time. Lord, give me Jesus. Give me the heart of Jesus. Give me the spirit of Jesus. Give me the soul of Jesus. Give me the life of Jesus. Give me the way of Jesus. Give me the truth of Jesus. Give me the life of Jesus. Give me the spirit of Jesus. Can you just ask, say the Father, give me Jesus. I give my own life to receive Jesus. I give my own heart to receive Jesus. Give my own spirit to receive Jesus. Lord, I want you. I want you. Lord Patrick is saying, don't let me. Don't let me fail you. I wait. Don't let me fail you, Lord. I don't have giftedness, I have you. I don't have gifts, I have you. I don't have help, I have you. I have no one, I have you. I wait on you. I wait on you. I wait on you, Lord. I wait on you. Lord, heal the sick. Lay your hands where there is sickness. Lord, heal the sick in this house. Lord, break yokes in this house. Lord, break yokes in this house. Break chains in this house. Lord, break spells in this house. Lord, open the eyes of everyone to come to know you, to love you, to serve you. Lord, let somebody's heart be open for salvation. Lord, put the burden of growth upon somebody. Lord, put the pressure of growth on somebody. Lord. Randoto Meliama Sepra. 
Le mande, le mene, yando teli ama celebra. Heal the woman of infection, Lord. Break the chains, break the chains, break the chains, break the spell. Open eyes to see. I wait on you. Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we wait on you, especially this week, Visit us with growth. Visit us with knowledge and wisdom and power and ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.